we have someone who through his creative thinking his extraordinary skill ever charming charisma and his joyful personality has been revolutionizing the food industry he is someone who has a love for different flavors of food starting from a very young age in the city of lucknow he is a gold medalist from the oberoi center of learning and development the founder of zion hospitality and the origin of initiatives like the big daddy chef through which he encourages men and everybody to explore their culinary skills at home and create cherished family moments through food one of the most recognized faces when it comes to um when it comes to food especially on social media on youtube or any of his other platforms he is someone and is a force to reckon with in this universe so please join me in welcoming none other than chef ajay chopra on our series today thank you so much sir for coming thank you so much thank you so much for the introduction thank you um before we get into anything else I, I, one thing that i found really interesting and i thought i wanted to ask you about is you grew up in a punjabi household in lucknow you come you come from a culture that of course loves its food and has its own very authentic cuisine and you grew up in a city that has um like you know is reputed for its wonderful charts and its food and all of that so how was that growing up and what are some of your earliest memories of food not only as in the kitchen of you cooking but also in lucknow as in general yeah so i think uh, you know uh, uh, one uh, aspect of my life which is not very well known is uh, that i didn't live in lucknow for a very long time i was 3 years when we left that city yes i was born there uh, so i have the aroma of lucknow uh, <laughs> in myself uh, and as a chef i always look back uh, to that city because that city has so much to give in terms of flavor uh, but yes uh, you know uh, growing up in a punjabi family and uh, in and around delhi um has been very exciting because we are so uh, connected to food and i don't have to repeat this again because i think everybody knows that punjabis talk about lunch on breakfast table and about dinner on the lunch table and what next day breakfast on the dinner table so uh, it's it's life with food and food alone so yeah it's been exciting uh, uh, being a punjabi and being a chef and you know exploring a lot of food. right and what has been one of your earliest memories in the kitchen um from what wh- what are the fondest earliest memories you have yeah so i think i was uh, uh i was 9 years old when uh, uh, uh you know uh, when i had first uh, dabbled my hands in the kitchen uh, just one second shadi um so i had uh, you know i i had uh, basically um never been inside the kitchen i was 9 years old and my mom was very unwell and she would always have a cup of tea at uh, uh, you know in an hour uh, in the evening um and that one day i saw her without that tea and i checked on her and she was very unwell and she was sick and she said beta man nahi kar raha mera chai banane ka so i went and i tried making uh, you know that tea and got her that glass of tea because as punjabis you don't have cups of tea we have glasses of tea um and she had tears in her eyes and that day uh, something struck i don't know i don't remember you know this is like a like a very very uh, long ago memory but i remember that moment that mom had tears in her eyes and um, i now think back and think that you know i think it is it is a love for food and it's, it's about the the food person who is creating that food there's definitely a big connect uh, and post that day i did not hold myself back i started to help mom in the kitchen and wherever i would go and see some skill uh, you know whether it was a dhaba guy making a dal fry i would pick up that skill and try and replicate that at home or if it was a chinese gadi wala you know I, i'll see them chopping the cabbage very finely so i requested mom to get me a fisker's knife i remember that in in the year 1990 uh, you know it used to be a fisker's knife which I, these days is like kind of not available um, and uh, that was very sharp at that time and and i got that and i cut my finger uh, trying to cut that cabbage uh, but all all fun i think uh, all of that led me to something although i had never thought because i did not know that there was any career like hotel management that one could join but uh, i think it it was god's will and way that he had planned for me and uh, i got to know about hotel management i said yeah interesting i should do that and when i entered uh, the hotel management college i think 6 months through I was very very sure that I wanted to be Namsha. So that's the journey. That sounds absolutely lovely and I think for a lot of us um and thanks for sharing that anecdote with us I think that was very sweet of you and it's so heartwarming that like you know um your 
culinary journey started with that cup of tea with your mom and i think that's uh, uh, that's just such a beautiful story for us to listen to as well and from there of course like you said you went into hotel management and there was no turning back but uh, one thing that like you know when i was pre- going through and sort of uh, one thing that you've always been very particular about and what you said in your answer earlier as well is that you're not someone who's ever sort of advocated for the whole idea of gender roles in ki- in the kitchen but that is of course something that has been around for a very long time and in and for and for some reason continues to as well so in in your professional journey once that has happened do, do the, what, what is your experience with these gender roles been in the more professional side of culinary um, uh, in the culinary world i mean see we all know that you know it's our mums and our grandfather grand grandmothers that we remember uh, for good food and it's uh, very very rare that we remember our father or our grandfather for uh, you know great food but if you look, look at it uh, ironically all chefs are males uh, you know so it is a quite a quite a quite a diverse thought process so if you think about it uh, the very fact is that there is no reason for it first of all right um vidhi ka vidhan bol sakte hain ya it is uh, a tradition uh, traditional thought but i think you know i am a believer in the bible and i know how it all started because uh, um adam was cursed uh, differently than eve you know and adam was cursed that you will go and earn the bread with the with the sweat of your, on your brow okay which means that man had to work hard to go and earn the bread which means that the woman uh, who was given by god as the perfect companion for adam would help him in everything else right so i think w- the woman took the role of the housemaker or the homemaker and uh, adam took, took the role of uh, the person who would go out and and uh, you know fetch bread um, and i think if you look at all of us traditionally this is how it has happened but now life has changed we are not living in the adam and eve world um you know uh, life has become very tough expenses have become very high and uh, it's all the couples who have to work together uh, so that's why i'm advocating this whole thing about the big daddy chef is because i believe that in a few man- few things and i also function you know my wife is sitting in the same room so i uh, obviously i'm saying it in all honesty um women don't get a day right but they do need to get some time off at least if not a day off so every sunday i take over the kitchen for dinner and uh, you know i cook with my boys what it does to me is that it creates that bonding with my boys it gives that little bit of rest to my wife and also gives her the thought that hey i'm not alone in all this we are together all right and i think that is family unit so if if dad start doing things like this then more families will not disintegrate but actually integrate and that's a very very important thing to be thought through in today's day and age because we see families breaking up we see boys and girls doing all sorts of things because you know their parents are very busy um you know but if the parents are taking their time out and doing these things and cooking is something that you do every day you know it is something that you have to do i think families will be very different this world will be very different so that is what the deep and thought on the big daddy said on the contrary in the professional world um it is the men who are in the kitchen is not because of any other reason i know some fantastic female chefs and in fact we know garima arora is that first indian chef who's got two michelin stars um it is about a woman's make like i talked about adam and eve you know eve was made as a more delicate one not the weaker one there's definitely a difference on how you handle a a, a rose mm-hmm. and how you handle a hammer right mm-hmm. so um women do make very good chefs and some of uh, very senior chefs that i know are very very good but because of the way this tradition is that women you know will give birth to children and they will have a maternity off and their bodies do go through a change and it is physically strenuous to stand for 18 20 hours not every woman is up and about to you know say that i will fight it out we never saw female pilots before now we have so many female pilots we never saw major generals or or you know high uh, uh, post uh, army uh, personnel as females but now we are seeing that so 
as the world is changing, I think this is happening that women are um, trying to say that why should I leave myself behind? I'll also do it more, right? So I, I don't see it as a gender inequality or equality at all. I just see it as the fact that if you want to do it, bring it on. Come, we'll all do it together. But if you don't want to do it, then in a team, whether it's a male or a female, I can't have someone who, you know, I have to show mercy on. I, I don't want to do that. It's a teamwork. You know, kitchens work with teams. And if one team member is going weak, weak, weaker, then it's not fair for the entire team. That's how, that's how I think. It could be a male, it could be a female. Got it. So just to sum that up for everyone that um, was watching, I think one thing that stood out for me was when you said your Sunday dinners with your boys is sort of a bonding moment for you. And that, you know, just creates that sense of family. And it, it, it's, like you said, it's become a family practice. And it's just something that happens because it needs to happen. And it's just sort of a moment that you take um, within the house as well. But, and what you said towards the end also that, like, you know, it's time to move on from a gender thing to a more merit-based thing, perhaps where, like, you know, you, where everyone is seen based on their merit and their strengths and their weaknesses and how they perform in the kitchen, like you said. True. And just going one step ahead of that in terms of talking about kitchens itself, um, as someone who is now a part of Gen Z, cafe culture is, of course, a huge part of um, how we exist. And like, you know, in this whole process of cafe culture, how do you think Indian food has changed? Because most of, um, mo I mean, with the boom of cafe culture also came a lot of Western food and Western um, European, Italian food uh, and like, you know, American food, which became very widespread across the country overall so how do you think indian food is doing in terms of what where do you think indian food is finding a place amongst this whole uh, revolution that's happening now okay so you know i was working in london from 2007 till 2009 and i was mm -hmm. having a i was having a conversation with somebody in terms of how the world is and how the cuisine is rolling about so uh, a gentleman uh, who was working with a very senior chef uh, uh, from the gordon ramsay regime um, gave this interesting thought about uh, uh, you know, what is modern food? Um, mm. And everybody says modern Indian, modern this, modern that. But uh, what is modern food? So there is, you know, there's modernism, there is contemporary food, and there is fusion food. So uh, somebody in this group also asked, what is your thought on fusion food? So I'll be, I think I'll start with that. Now, uh, for me, fusion is confusion, you know, <laughs> period. Because um, um, people do not understand uh, the uh, basics and the foundations, and they try and mix and match two flavors. Um, so that doesn't work. You know, I'm, I'm not going to name the restaurant and the place that I had, but I, I recently had, uh, I asked for a sweet lassi, and uh, he said, sir, let me surprise you. Uh, so he made a salted chance with a little bit of sweet and pan. It was horrible, right? Because it just doesn't go well. So um, the point I'm trying to make is that it has to, not just taste well, but it also has to have ethos. So fusion can have ethos only when you know your basics well. Contemporary is very well uh, cooked food, plated very well. Modernist food is when I start thinking differently. So for example, if I have had Pani Puri in a particular manner where I've stood on the street and you know eaten like that, can I think of putting seafood in the Pani Puri? Now that's not fusion. That's modern because why only put aloo? Why can't I have seafood? Why can't I have prawns? You know, why can't I have a tom yum soup with my pani puri? Who stops me? You know, so it's about thinking differently. So uh, I think for me, this particular understanding is very important when you say, what do we understand about Indian food? The other aspect is that Indian food across the world is now the second most uh, uh, enjoyed cuisine because the first one is obviously their own. So if you're in Germany or if you're in France or if you're in Italy, people are now looking for Indian food more than ever before. So this is very good news for us. Um, but in India, I think we've gone leaps and bounds because we went from um, Indian uh, to fusion to contemporary to modern. And now the trend is postmodern, which is basically coming back to our re regional roots, understanding how we are and who we are and cooking along with that. Got that. 
but one thing about what you said um, that I just like that sort of directly leads into my next question. Actually, you said Indian food was the second most sought after food uh, in most parts of the world, right after their own. One thing that is unique about Indian food is its definition of vegetarianism, uh, because of how we integrate dairy but not meat, or how there are so within India itself there are so many different versions of what vegetarian food means, and even amongst that, um, what we do at all of our IIMU and conferences, we do them in about, in about 220 cities in India and about 35 countries uh, worldwide. We make it a practice to serve vegetarian food in our conferences, whether it's in India or in Japan or Uruguay or anywhere. So how do you think now that, of course, veganism is becoming this thing across the world, uh, more people are uh, like, you know, uh, relinquishing meat. How do you think Indian vegetarian cuisine as a concept is finding a place worldwide now? So, uh, so there are three things. One is that, you know, I would, I would uh, not completely agree that, uh, uh, you know, that uh, Indian food is different because uh, we are vegetarian. I think Indian food is different because we are 29 states and seven union territories and each state and each union territory has at least two cuisines. So I believe you are from Gujarat. Looking at you, it looks like you're from Gujarat. No, no, I'm from Karnataka. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm, please forgive me. But even in Karnataka, you know, you will find at least two cuisines. Um, you know, uh, in Gujarat, you'll get find three. In Rajasthan, you'll find two. Um, you know, so if we, if we calculate, we, we are a country we have one country with almost 40, 50 cuisines. Each Correct. cuisine having, um, let's say, a minimum of 50 dishes. You know, do the mathematics. So I think that's what is India all about. It's so different. Um, we can't have the same dal every day, whilst uh, Agora can have the same baked beans every day. We can't. We can't have the same alu paratha every day. One day we have to have alu paratha, the second day we have alu piyaj paratha, third day we have, you know. So we need our, we need our variety. Uh, now, coming to vegetarian and your question on vegetarianism and veganism, uh, I think. Uh, you know, people are uh, uh, moving towards veganism. Very honestly, I don't know why. I uh, I, I don't like it because uh, you, know, you know, there's always been a coexisting society across the world which has been there. You know, so Darwin's theory will be put to rest if everybody becomes vegan, right? So. I mean, the circle of life has to complete. That's what I feel and believe. Uh, but having said that, a lot of doctors are saying that because obesity is on the rise, um, you know, a lot of doctors are saying, stop dairy, you know, become vegan. I'm not sure. Let's understand a life without butter, cream, and milk. You won't have butter chicken. You won't have uh, Ras Malai. You won't have gulab jamun. Think about your life without it. I mean, you can't really make gulab jamun with almond milk, can you? You can't really enjoy life as you did without that. Right? So I'm not hurting anybody's feelings, but all I'm saying is that veg, non veg, tak thik hai. veganism, I don't understand because you, you know, I mean, people say you're torturing the animal by getting the milk out. If you don't get the milk out, you know, nature will release the milk by itself. Has anybody not known a mom who does not wean the child and her breast gets wet? It's nature. The milk has to be used. You know, if the calf has stopped having it, then somebody else will have it. That's nature. So so that's my answer to it. Just, just, just to probe a little further on that, um, how, and whatever implying it earlier also was in terms of the in terms of the food the recipes because when when someone says vegan food or vegetarian food we immediately jump to like mediterranean salads or um very boring bland dishes so but whereas there's this huge uh, repository of indian food that meets several criteria of what people consider vegetarian or vegan or whatever their definition is so how do you think we can probably educate the world that this whole beautiful menu exists within india uh, of tasty dishes that they can probably incorporate into their uh, lifestyles or choices, whatever they are. See, if you have to, then there are uh, millions of choices. That's the beauty of Indian food that you don't have to just remain with what you are. So if you look at simple meals like Rajma Chawal, you know, you'll, have, you'll probably avoid a Kadi Chawal, but you can still have a Rajma mm -hmm. Chawal. Uh, you can avoid uh, having an Alu Paratha with butter, but you can have it with uh, just oil. You know, 
so so there are ways and means to kind of think differently so for example um you know in one of our restaurants that uh, we were making a western dish uh, instead of the butter and cream we we just made a cashew cream so you know so things can be replicated the, the cuisine knowledge is vast you just have to think through okay what can i use uh, but definitely it needs uh, understanding of flavors will it match or not match not everything can support tofu not everything can support cashew got it um but one more thing that has sort of become the eat place for food now is social media your social media alone sort of has these two it has a beautiful dichotomy where you talk about you have uh you talk about gourmet but then you also talk about these fun quirky modern home dishes and like things you can do at home you the the like you know you you balance both ends of that spectrum beautifully on your social media so i kind of had a two fold question here one is how did you sort of um and how do you the first part is how do you strike that balance on your social media which is between high end gourmet food but then you also talk about home food and second is how do you think the whole advent of social media has changed the food industry itself okay before i answer this question can i ask you another question sure will this be your last question because i have a restaurant to open <laughs> okay sure <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, so yeah so interesting question thank you uh, but uh, social media is a two edged sword you know it it is helpful for people who uh, uh, you know are obviously wanting quick uh, easy way outs and easy recipes and easy hacks um, and definitely it requires uh, uh, you know someone to uh, you know continuously keep posting and that's what i do that uh, we live in two worlds where i'm uh, my viewers are also 40 50 plus and my viewers are also 20 30 plus so i'll have to do both kinds of uh, things to keep entertained uh, both the genres um, but in terms of social media i think it's very important that uh, you know we di- we give relatable and relevant uh, information all the time because people are looking forward to you know learn I met so many people. We just recently opened a restaurant in Bangalore, and met so many people who said, "Chef, thank you for those tips." You know, because sometimes they might sound very simple, but they are tips. Lovely. Uh, there is one small tradition that we do have at IIMUN before we let our guests go, which is called our rapid fire. It will take about a minute if we can just do that with you now. Yeah. Um, so I'll just read out a bunch of words and phrases, and you can just tell us the first thing that comes to mind. Um, the first one is home. love second one is street food alu tikki chaat it is all hungry the third one is hospitality um warmth warmth uh, uh, the next one is sort of culinary books treasure 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 the next one is social media double edged sword Lovely. The next one is youth. Ah, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> I wish I could not have a rapid one on this, but uh, I think the youth's uh, future. future. You know, uh, um, it's one way to think that the youth are not doing this, not doing that, but they are the future. Okay. Okay. The next one is India. Ah, one trillion economy. wonderful and the last one is our organization which is iimun fantastic thank you thank you and before no, we let really you really speaking go, i think you guys do a lot in terms of uh, you know keeping yourself abreast as well as uh, giving a lot of information uh, through social media and other channels so well done thank you that's very kind of you and before we just let you go one question that is a part of the series is what has been your recipes recipe for success and if there are a few ingredients you want to share with all of the students watching what would those be well i think my recipe for success uh, after 25 years i figured out that uh, trust god um, work hard and uh, do that continuously do both of them continuously lovely so the recipe awesome. being faith hard work and yeah and and for the students i think uh, you know uh, the only thing that i would I'd like to say that uh, you know you can work smart. A lot of lot of students today say, "No, you don't need to work hard. You need to work smart." Uh, my answer to that that is that uh, unless you worked hard, you won't even know what is working smart. True. 
lovely sir thank you so much for your time it's been absolutely lovely chatting with you i think there was so much to take away from everything you told us and in the end what you said which is to have faith uh, put in the work put in the hours and have hard work which will then lead to smart work you can't just do smart work without the hard work first so thank you so much for spending time with us here today we